Hello to all students. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss osmosis. Osmosis is a process in which water molecules or solvent molecules from moves from a dilute solution to concentrated solution through a semi-permeable membrane. So first of all, we are going to look at the definition of osmosis. If we look at the definition of osmosis, the flow of solvent, which is usually water in living systems, through a semi-permeable membrane, which is usually a membrane made up of animal cell or plant cell, usually cell membrane is known as semi-permeable membrane. We are going to discuss later in this lecture. From dilute solution to concentrated solution. Dilute solution is such solution which contain less amount of solute, while concentrated solution is such solution which contain more amount of solutes. We can also define this definition by another means. We can say that the flow of solvent through a semi-permeable membrane from higher water potential. Higher water potential is usually present in dilute solution. From higher water potential to lower water potential. With lower water potential is usually present in concentrated solutions, which can usually contain high amount of solutes. Now, first of all, we are going to discuss semi-permeable membrane. What is semi-permeable membrane? Semi-permeable membrane is also known as partially permeable membrane or differentially permeable membrane. A membrane that will allow certain molecules or ions to move across it or to pass through it is known as semi-permeable membrane. All animal cells and plant cell membranes are usually semi-permeable membrane because we are going to discuss living systems. Cell membrane, plasma membrane, nuclear membrane, these are all types of semi-permeable membranes. These membranes are impermeable for large polar molecules like ions, proteins, etc. These molecules cannot pass through the semi-permeable membrane. While some molecules which are permeable, these molecules are small, non-polar like water, oxygen, lipids, CO2, nitrogen, etc. These molecules can easily pass through per, as semi-permeable membrane. Now we are going to describe osmosis through an experiment. I have taken a beaker which contains solvent, usually water. A pure water has maximum water potential which is regarded as zero and it is described as psi, Greek symbol psi which is zero. But I have added some solute in it. So this solution is dilute solution and it is usually known as hypotonic solution. In another beaker, I have also taken another amount of water or solvent and dissolve certain type of solutes like salt or sugar to make it concentrated solution. The concentrated solution is usually known as hypertonic. Now I am going to put together these two solutions. This solution has higher water potential because it is dilute and this solution has lower water potential because it is concentrated. Now I am going to join these two solution together but I am going to put a semi-permeable membrane or partially permeable membrane in between these two solution. You can see in this diagram with green color. On this side there is a dilute solution and on this side there is a concentrated solution. After certain time we will see that the amount of water or solvent is going to increase in this side and is going to decrease on this side. What will happen the water molecules or solvent molecules will move from dilute solution to high concentrated solution from higher water potential to lower water potential. Some water molecules can also move back but the 
more amount of water molecules or greater amount of water molecules will move from dilute to concentrated solution. This is known as osmosis. The movement of water molecules or solvent molecules through a semi-permeable membrane from higher water potential to lower water potential or from dilute solution to concentrated solution. This osmosis will keep continuing until an equilibrium is attained. At equilibrium, osmosis will stop. Now we are going to discuss this process in another ex experiment. So I have taken a beaker which contain pure water. As you know that pure water has maximum water potential which is zero. And I have taken an egg of hen and removed its shell by dissolving its shell in hydrochloric acid, dilute HCl. After removing the shell of the egg, I put the, shell, put the egg in this pure water. Another experiment, I have taken a beaker and put a salt solution, concentrated solution of salt inside the beaker. And same process with the egg. The shell of the egg is going to be removed and egg without shell will be kept in this solution. After some time when I observe that this cell, this egg has been, has gained water by endoosmosis because water potential in the beaker is greater than the water potential in the egg. So water will move from outside into the egg. As a result, egg swells. While in other experiment, water will move out from the egg, which is known as exosmosis, because water potential inside the egg is greater than outside the egg. So water will leave the egg and comes into this salt solution. As a result, the cell will shrink. So endoosmosis and exoosmosis can both take place in living organism from one cell to another cell in the same way plants water can enter from soil into roots from roots into stems and from stem into leaves through endoosmosis and exosmosis sometime water enters and leaves vacuole through cell membrane so in this experiment the the membrane of the egg will work as will act as uh, semi-permeable membrane while osmosis is if the osmosis is going to take place there should be a osmotic gradient if there is no osmotic gradient then osmosis will not take place and one more important factor about osmosis is osmotic pressure osmotic pressure is responsible for the movement of water molecule or solvent molecule through plasma, through plasma membrane or semi-permeable membrane. The measure of tendency of a solution to take in the pure solvent by osmosis. The higher osmotic pressure will lead towards more osmosis. The lower osmotic pressure will lead to lesser amount of osmosis. That's all for today. See you in the next lecture. Until then, bye.